Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today we're going to cover a little workaround. This probably qualifies as a life hack, actually, for presenting both your face and shared content, like a slideshow and a browser or a file, at the same time during a Microsoft Teams meeting. Basically, you can present like a newscaster in a meeting, and it requires no additional software or skills to do it. It can really amp up your presentation, class, meeting, whatever. This is actually a really, really cool trick. God, I am such a nerd. Let's dive in. Microsoft Teams has made some major changes and improvements when it comes to how people's faces and content display during meetings, but there's still a big need, at least in my opinion, for sharing your face with your content in a configurable side-by-side -side way. Uh, think of a newscaster with a graphic above their shoulder or like a gamer live streaming their play with their face in the corner. I see this having a big impact on meetings where there are main presenters, not really ones where people are uh, discussing or brainstorming back and forth. It's also fantastic if you're a teacher presenting slides or a whiteboard in your browser and you want to show your face to keep students more engaged. You can even use this in a Teams live event if you want. It works better than the built-in side-by-side -side content and video feature if you ask me. Now, to set expectations, what this won't do for you is present multiple people's faces at once on some background uh, with other content. This isn't a way to uh, recreate talking heads on cable news. It's a way for one presenter to share their screen and with their screen show content and their camera video feed at the same time. Now, many of you will instantly say, hold up, Matt, there are already ways to do this. Just use OBS Studio or another video encoder. And my response to that is, bless your hearts. And that's coming from a New Yorker. There are more than 75 plus million daily users of Teams, and almost all of them will be scared by your use of the word studio and completely lost by the term video encoder. Let's be real. What I'm covering today is as easy as moving some windows around and sharing your screen, meaning it's something any presenter can do. If you want to do something more complex using a video encoder, by all means, go for it. In fact, click the included card to watch John Moore's overview of using OBS to do something similar and definitely more slick, but more complex. All right, so let's cover what we're really doing here. It's actually really simple. To share your face and your content at the same time, you need to have your content open and you need to have open an app that will show your webcam's video feed live. Then just align these apps on your screen and share your screen in Teams. You can do this in both Windows and Mac OS. I'm using Mac OS, but don't let that deter you. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to pull through the live feed of your webcam's uh, video feed so that you can post that as uh, basically an app on the screen and that's gonna be something you're gonna share. So that's what people are going to see next to whatever content you're gonna share. So if I move this, uh, team screen out of the way. I'm going to open up on my end uh, using Mac OS. I'm using uh, QuickTime actually built in, which is very handy to use. If I go into file and uh, new movie recording, which is happening on a separate screen, now you can see me. So this is my live feed uh, of me and my webcam feed coming through. Uh, one major aspect of this, because it doesn't really matter which uh, video feed or video app that you're going to use as long as it can connect to your webcam uh, and you want to make sure that it's not going to flip horizontally what the feed is that's coming through and a quick way that you can test that or tell is uh, you know make sure that actually very easy for me is see if there's text anywhere nearby if it's backwards you're being flipped uh, if you don't have text nearby you can look for you know the buttons on the correct size uh, side uh, your hair part whatever uh, notable feature on your face that kind of thing uh, just make sure that it's coming through the correct way. Um, if you're using Mac or if you're using Windows, uh, try using the built-in camera app. Just go to the start menu and type in camera. There's a built-in app just similar to QuickTime in this situation, uh, and you can get that same feed. The other thing I like about QuickTime, and uh, you wanna try to look into the camera app to make sure it can do this, is if I, if I leave the app and I kind of 
go away from it after a little bit, it will then hide all the buttons. So now it's just a clean video feed. It's actually very, very nice. There are other camera apps out there that you can download and install that are gonna be free as well. I don't, I'm not here to recommend anything like that. I just wanna point out some of the features to keep things professional, which is to ensure that you're coming through the way that people would expect to see you and not a mirror image, which is what you expect to see of you because you're used to seeing yourself in a mirror. And the other is to try to keep the screen itself clean. Uh, I would also not recommend having like a microphone right in front of here, but I wanna make sure the sound quality coming through here is good. Now I'm gonna bring over a PowerPoint presentation because I want to present both content and my face at the same time. So let's bring over a PowerPoint presentation. Again, I have a second monitor going at the same time, so I can kind of prep on one and display everything on the other. And ooh, we're talking about Microsoft Lists today, so this is very exciting. So if I were to normally present this PowerPoint presentation, you're gonna see if I were to press play, it takes over the whole screen. No good, we don't want that. What we do want is to have the two things separate as two different windows that I can move around and adjust as I see necessary. So there's actually a, a, a useful little switch I can make in PowerPoint is to uh, go into slideshow and then click set up slideshow. This works the exact same way uh, on Windows. And under show type, there's an option called browsed by an individual. And if I click on that, when I press present, it now makes it in a resizable window that's controllable. So what I'm gonna do is say, Play from start again and now I have my slideshow here in a resizable window that I can put next to or you know on top of whatever uh, my uh, slideshow and my uh, video together so to do this sort of newscaster look and feel let's shrink this down a little bit one tip is please only move this from the toolbar because if you grab from inside it moves to the next slide you don't want that uh, the only way to move around in this is using the keys, the left and right arrow, so I can go backwards using the left arrow and forwards using the right. So I'm going to resize this because I'm going to do the little newscaster thing, and I'm going to increase my video as big as I possibly can and center it on my screen. And if I bring up my slideshow, you see I can put this here, size it right, and drop it there. Now, I either want to move myself or I want to move my camera. So let's just move my camera. And now you've got me here and I can present and start talking about whatever's going on in my slideshow. So I can start clicking through and actually I can move my uh, mouse out of the way. And now that my PowerPoint slideshow is at the, the top and featured, I can use the keys to move forward with it. Uh, this is actually a video, the first thing here. Uh, and then it moves on to uh, you know the, the agenda for this and it moves on to further details about this uh, presentation about Microsoft lists and how it's compared to SharePoint lists and all that kind of stuff. So that's one option. Another is you can put these side by side. So in Mac OS and Windows, both of these offer a way to basically drop the two apps next to each other in a split view, right? So I'm going to do that in Mac. You can do this in Windows. Uh, I'll leave a link in the, uh, in the description so you can see how to do it in both situations so you can kind of do it automatically. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split this and I'm going to add my slideshow on the left and I'm going to choose my video feed on the right. Now that I'm no longer doing newscast, I'm gonna move my uh, camera back here. And now you can see I have a nice black background. You can see me on the right side of the screen. You can see the slideshow on the uh, left side and I can move forward in my slides here. I have a little more uh, video stuff going on here. I can move forward in my slides and it looks really professional to have these two things going at the same time. So. If I jump into Microsoft Teams, and let's say that, and of course on Mac at least, I have to uh, leave the large screen view here. If I jump into Teams and I join a meeting, all right, let's go into this weekly tips and tricks meeting here and it's going to bring up my options for joining. I will join as I normally would. I don't actually need the Teams app anywhere nearby, so I'm gonna move that around, and now I'm in the meeting. So all I have to do is share my screen, and I'm gonna use this screen here, the one where uh, this happens to have all this content, and now everybody can see the way that this is set up. Now, of course, I would want to set this up prior to them joining, uh, and let's make sure I do start this. And now I've got my screen or my uh, slides going at the same time. And on the other end, people will see just uh, this stuff being shared. So that is how you would share this from, uh, you know, a, a nice um, uh, 
desktop share through to everybody else in the uh, Teams meeting. So if this is a class or whatever else, uh, you have a really nice way to share that stuff. Another cool thing you can do here, let's uh, get out of the, the um, uh, presenter mode here and let's close out my large head here. I can show a few different things. Maybe I want to show uh, presenter view or um, slide view, sorry. Presenter view is a different thing. And maybe I want to show some more content. So I can size these so that they take up this area. And let's shrink this down a little bit and line them up. And again, this is something you want to do before you actually start sharing. And then let's bring over some actual uh, some content that I can actually be demoing. So there's my browser. And let's say I want to open up this list in Microsoft Lists as I want to show off a demo. And I can also move forward in my slideshow. And maybe I want to bring up the, the agenda. And here is a demonstrable uh, list that I can show off at the same time. So that's all you know, really cool. So let's do one more thing here. So with Microsoft uh, whiteboard that comes with the meeting that you want to use, maybe you want to show the whiteboard and you want to show yourself. So in that case, I don't need PowerPoint any longer. So let's close out of PowerPoint and I'm going to keep myself here. And then I'm going to go uh, use the browser to open up the whiteboard app and Let's pull that up from here. And then on the other end, in the real world, I have my iPad here. So I can pull up a whiteboard that I want to start talking about in my browser. And maybe I do this half tiled look and feel thing here. And I can be bringing up this thing here again on my iPad. And I can start saying things like F equals MA. And I can start doing. Uh, you know, if I were to throw, uh, shoot a ball out of a cannon at a 30 degree angle, where is it going to land? Uh, you know, at a certain velocity uh, and all that stuff. Uh, all, all back to my old physics days. This is the kind of thing that I can be doing and uh, tossing through uh, uh, my whiteboard live from another device so that it's being shared here all through Microsoft Teams. And at this point, the only thing I really showed you about Microsoft Teams is just to share a screen. That's it, right? So this is really, really useful because it's not about Microsoft Teams. It's about content and about sharing content and sharing yourself in a way that's much more uh, uh, presentable and so people can be engaging with you and see what you're doing. Uh, perhaps you're like me and you talk with your hands a lot uh, or maybe you're uh, you know, a teacher or professor and you just want your students to be able to see your facial expressions, what you're referring to, what you're pointing to. Perhaps you're in front of things that you want to reference uh, and uh, you want to be able to you know, write things out. So uh, being able to pull up the whiteboard app on uh, my iPad and being able to share it here you have so many, so many opportunities and so many different ways you can, uh, you can do this. So a lot of cool features and uh, sort of a workaround. But anyway, we'll get back to it. Let's jump into uh, a couple uh, uh, downsides or things that you should watch out for as you uh, move forward with, uh, with using this quick tip. Okie doke. As handy as this trick is, there are a few downsides. One, I haven't tested, but I very much doubt you could do this with your tablet or your phone. Two, you can't get rid of the top bars of the apps if you're not pushing to full screen. Three, the whole thing works best if you have a second monitor. It can work if you have one, but it can be annoying to have to jump between your content and Teams to check in on the chat or anything else going on during the meeting. If you're using one monitor, I suggest setting your Windows taskbar or Mac OS dock to automatically hide. Enable do not disturb in Windows or Mac OS. I also suggest you join the meeting on your phone to follow the chat as a workaround. Four, this will impact bandwidth. If people in your meeting are complaining about your shared content coming through delayed, slow, or choppy, have them turn off incoming video for everyone else, which actually disables your incoming video feed too, uh, and it should improve things while still showing your shared screen. So that's pretty much it. Anyway, I'd love to hear if this would be useful for you and how you'd put it to work in your organization. As always, a like and a subscribe is very appreciated. Leave any questions or comments below and video requests are always taken into account. Hey, happy newscasting.